Welcome to Genesis Rehab Renovation Project Management System Training and Education on the Use of Genesis System. This is a series of training videos that teach you how to take advantage of all the benefits and opportunities of working with Genesis. In this training, we're going to talk about how to do a new project creation in the Genesis system. So the first thing you need to do is log in as a consultant making sure you've entered your company ID, and then you enter the consultant management system. Here you must enter your email address and your password that was assigned by the Genesis system. Once you've logged into the system, the next step is to create the new project. There are two ways to create a project. One is by importing data from ISN into the system, but if you are not a member of, if you're not using ISN, that is not a problem. You can enter your information manually, as you can see here. So here where you set up and enter the basics of the property. The name of the project can be any name you want. As a naming convention, I usually like to put the street name of the property and then the street number on the end. So for example, you can put the name of the customer you can do any naming convention you feel comfortable with, but it's a good idea to name the project to make it easy to find in your system. The municipality, it's a good idea to make sure you know what township you're working with with regard to the permit activity. And here you can see this is a township. You enter the type of 203K it is. Is it a purchase or a refinance? Or if you're not yet sure, if you're entering this order before you go out to the property, you may not know. You might not know yet what the reserve is. If you're familiar with the lender that you're working with, you might automatically know what that's going to be. And here you can enter your initial inspection date. These dates are important because these dates are going to be used to identify what your timing is for the future uh, checks of the system. We don't have an end date, obviously, because we haven't filled one in. And here you're going to enter the property address and the property details. And you, when you enter this information, you might not know the FHA case number, so you don't have to worry about it, and you also may not yet know the loan number. You will after closing, so at that point you can come back and enter this information again. With regard to the age and the utilities of the property, you have the option of putting information in here or leaving it alone to be to be determined if you are not sure. Once you have completely entered all the information that you would like to have as the basic information for the project and the property, you continue on to step two. Here is where you put the information about your client slash borrower. Again, you're going to put the first and last name, home phone or cell phone, email address, fax number, anything about the property. For example, if there's an additional individual involved in the process, the address line one, address line two, city, state, and zip. Once you've completely entered the information and any additional notes that you might have, you can hit save and continue to step three. If, for example, you have multiple borrowers, you can actually, and if the borrowers have the same last name, you can put the first and, last and second borrower, or if you need to, you can put in that way. And that way you have both names for your order. But in this situation, we only have one on the loan. But since the spouse has been communicating, I added him there. So I hit save and continue to step three. Now you can see we have this project moving forward and we're going to put in here the lender information. So here we're going to put the name of the loan officer who has helped us complete the project. 
Now I've entered the information. I'm going to hit now save and to continue. And as you can see, we're just about finished. And this bar, and as it says, finally, almost done. If you if your project does not have a lender, you do not have to enter this. This is all optional. So once you've entered all the information, you're taken to the active project screen where you see that the project is now listed. Also, you can view the, act, the project from here where you can see that this project is in the phase of pre-inspection because the inspection date has not happened yet and we haven't completed, we have not yet completed the pre-inspection paperwork. So by clicking that, it takes us to a page where, again, this project is now listed again as pre-inspections do. So to create your pre-inspections, the paperwork needed to, to go forward to move with the loan in anticipation of your upcoming inspection date, you need to be able to create a cover page and your consultant services agreement. You click here to create your cover page. Now, you can upload a default project picture or none at all. And remember, this is for the pre-inspection report and so typically you're going to be able to create this after you have come back in the field and you can browse and find the front picture of the property to upload for this report. So now this is actually a pre-inspection report so you don't even have to use anything but for this purpose I'm just going to stick my company logo in. As you can see allowed file types are JPEGs. And there you see that it's a preliminary 203K report. If you don't want to use that terminology, you can edit this term. If you want to call it a feasibility report, you can change the heading. If it is a, um, if you want to call this something else, investor project report, whatever you want, you actually can create the heading that you want to use. So if you want to call it a feasibility report, you can. And so now we have the heading for the file, and now we can generate a preview. To view the preview on my computer, it will pop up. I have my settings set differently. But you press this button, and you actually can view the cover page for the pre-inspection. And now that's done. So now you go back to your task list. And the next task is to create your consultant services agreements. We have given you a preliminary consultant services agreement that you can edit and put information for your specific state. So for example, for me, it's the state of Pennsylvania and the standards of practice of And so you see me entering this information here. And then here is all of the terms and you can see that you can edit this and change this to your company name or whatever you need. This is totally editable. You can put whatever fees that you choose to charge. This agreement is completely editable. You can change it and make a new default for your company. And so I hit submit. And now the consultant services agreement has been added. So here you can see you've done the two steps necessary to create the consultant services agreement. You are yet to upload your signature. Click settings from the menu above to upload your signature. So you can go to settings and add your signature to the file. But let's preview our pre-inspection report. Now here you can see the preliminary 203K report. There's my name as the consultant who created it. That's the property address. And there's that image we put in. So as you can see, it's a rather large image, and I probably will take it out. But you can see that there's the address, the initial inspection date, the client information, and the lender information. And that's on page one. And then following that,
you see the consultant services agreement. And there you can see the client, the property address, the client's current address. That's where they currently live. That's not the agreement address. And then all four pages of the property. We know that this is the property address. This is the inspected address. This is their current information. Here's the fees. And you can print this off and take it with you as your pre-inspection document. I want to save this file. Now that we have completed the information for the pre-inspection report, we are ready to go out into the field and conduct our project. And if you click the link, you see now that the pre-inspection is still currently due because of the date. And the preliminary work write-up, we have zero pending because the date of the initial inspection has not yet taken place. Once this date has elapsed, this will change to one because now that's a report that is pending. So we can go back to the project. And there you can see we've completed our pre-inspection task. And we can edit the project if we want to. And that's where we can change any of the property information. We can end the project if we need to. And we can view the project details. And there's the project details. Easy for you to see. And this shows you that right now, as a snapshot, we have one pre-inspection due, which is the one we've got, we have canceled. And here is where you can upload a digital signature. So I'm going to hit Browse. And so before we end this training session, I just want to share with you that at the dashboard level, what you're going to be able to see is the project status and a recap of what you've created to date. So you've stored one lender. And you click this button here, and it shows you that you have one project in play. You can go to your projects list, and you can see your active projects. There's the image of the project. And that's the image of the house that we uploaded. So now let's we can actually change this data. So let's edit this right now. Perfect. We can edit this by going back to the preliminary inspections, go back to our preliminary, and we can edit our cover page by uploading a different image. We can delete this image. And we can now add a picture. So go back to the project task. Oops. And we can create the cover page. So I'm just going to pick a property. In my 203K active projects. And there's a nice picture to use. Now, you notice how it is now filed successfully uploaded. So if we go back, and there is the picture of the property. So if we go back to the active project screen, you can see the small little image of the house to help remind you of the home that you're doing the work on. And we can sign the PDF with your signature because we've entered a signature. So here we can create our pre-inspection report. So this ends this session on setting up the initial project through pre-inspection phase.